Welcome back. Now I'm going to illustrate how one can, using the ideal gas law, how one can do a simple experiment and demonstration to calculate the temperature of absolute zero, how many uh, Celsius is absolute zero equal to. So I have this pressure gauge here. Basically the pressure gauge is a ball here and uh, the ball is able to tell the pressure on it and the gauge is connected to this gauge here and so right now it's showing about 15 that's atmospheric pressure to be more exact it's 14.7 atmospheric pressure is 14.7 psi pounds per square inch but on this uh, reading here it's not really a very good uh, digital scale but you i can tell that it's about 15. so the temperature right now at room temperature i can make this one data point at room temperature, what the pressure is, that's about 15 PSI, right? Okay, you can see now I have the computer open and I'm gonna make an Excel file. Uh, the temperature in the room is 24.4 Celsius, 24.4. And then we saw that the pressure was uh, 15, 24.4 Celsius, right? Water bath right here. The temperature there is point, point 0.1 Celsius, right? Point 0.1 Celsius. So you can see here. Okay. So then it's going to be point 0.1 Celsius. And then I'm going to put my uh, pressure gauge in there, determine the pressure. So it should go way down, right? All the way in. And the pressure should go down. Do your best to try to read this here, 11, 12. So again, this is not a digital scale, so 11, 12, 13, 13.5, 13.8 is my best guess, 13.8 PSI, okay, okay, then I'll measure the temperature of my hot beaker of water, okay, so the temperature is going to go way, way up, it's going to be 73.0, 73.0 Celsius, but of course it's going to drop quickly, so I should do this quickly. So it's going to be 72 point right now, 72.6. Okay, and it immediately determine the pressure. So the pressure should go up, 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 up. And so what I'm going to do at the instant that I record the pressure, I'm also going to record the temperature. Okay, so it's going to be right there. There's going to be 15, 16, 17. The pressure is 17.2. And the temperature is 71.9, 17.2, 71.9. So 17.2. Okay, and then we have a 71.9 Celsius. So you've got three um, data points right here. Okay, so what I can do is I can put here the temperature at the left. Right, let's erase this. I'm gonna, on the left, I'm gonna put the temperature. So uh, the lowest temperature was 0.1, right? Then I'm gonna put the next temperature, 24.4. Then I'm gonna put the next temperature, 71.9. Then I'm gonna put my three pressure readings, right? Uh, it's gonna be 13.8 PSI. Right, and then the next one is 15 PSI, right? And then the next one is 17.2, right? So then what are we gonna do with this? Well, one thing you can see from here is that the temperature, the hotter temperature creates more pressure in the gas, right? Because the molecules move faster and therefore they create more pressure. Well, this is according to the ideal gas law, right? Pressure times volume is the number of moles times R times T. In this case, the number of moles of gas is not changing in here, right? The number of moles of gas is staying constant. So I'm not changing the N, okay? And I'm not changing the volume either. So both of these are the same, and of course, R is the gas constant. Therefore, pressure is proportional to temperature. But this is true in the Kelvin scale, right? Pressure is proportional to temperature. So if we make a plot, what should happen here? It's a linear proportionality. We're at that Kelvin scale, zero Kelvin, right? The pressure should be zero. So the, uh, the zero Kelvin is defined as the temperature where all molecular motion stops. And at zero Kelvin, right, which is absolute zero, the pressure in the, the pressure gauge should be zero. 
the molecular motion stops and therefore they stop hitting the walls of the container and they have no more pressure, right? So zero Kelvin is, is also uh, analogous to the, uh, the gas having no pressure, right? So then I'm gonna make a plot of this. Then I'm gonna go insert, then I'm gonna go scatter plot. Right? And then the three data points I have should be approximately linear line. Right? Of course, since I did it in Celsius scale, these three are going to give me a linear line. And then this is going to keep going back, keep going back. How far back is it going to go? Well, it's going to go all the way to negative something, 200, 300, 400, whatever. At that negative something temperature, right, the pressure is going to drop to zero. You see? So if we had no clue what absolute zero is in terms of Celsius, we could do this little experiment to determine that. You need a, at least three data points to do a good fit. If you just had two data points, it wouldn't be a good fit because any two data points would create a straight line, right? So then I'm gonna go to Excel and I'm gonna say, uh, give me the, the trend line. Then I'm gonna say linear line. Right, and then I'm going to say uh, trend line. More trend line options. And then under the more trend line options, you can say display the equation on the chart, display the R squared value. Okay, display the equation display the R squared value. So this is my equation right here. And that means the Y is the pressure is equal to, you can tell here, make this bigger. So of course the Y means pressure And T means temperature, uh, X means temperature, right? So I can change my data points. This is pressure, this is temperature, but the temperature is in Celsius, right? So of course this is an increasing function, and then it keeps going back, 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 back. The R squared value is pretty good. R squared equals one would mean all the three points perfectly fit on a straight line. That means I don't have any deviations. Actually, my data is actually good. 0 0.9997 is approximately one, that means my three data points are pretty much lining up on a straight line. So I don't have random errors. I might have systematic error in my lab because I can't read the, because this is not a digital scale, I can't read the scale too well. So I might have systematic error. The instrument might be flawed a little bit, but I don't have too much random error. That means the, the, three, the three points line up on a straight line. So here's my equation then, okay? Pressure is equal to 0 0.0472 T plus 13.816, okay? So now let's set the pressure equal to zero, right? Because as this line goes back, at some point the pressure is gonna be zero, right? Pressure is gonna be zero, so for what temperature, what temperature in the Celsius scale causes the pressure to be zero, right? So then what's that gonna be? Then you're just going to take this to over there, negative 13 divided by this, right? That means at uh, that Celsius temperature, pressure will drop zero. That means this is equal to zero Kelvin, right? Zero Kelvin. How, how is my result? Well, people have, that have done this experiment over and over much more accurately tell us that negative 273.15 Celsius is, one, uh, is uh, zero Kelvin. Absolute zero is equivalent to negative 273.15. I'm pretty close, I'm within 20 Celsius of that. To be using a crude experiment like this with reading the, without having a digital scale, some systematic error, I'm actually really, really happy. So I proved that I'm getting a straight line. So one thing we did is we proved that pressure is a linear function of temperature. So we proved the ideal gas law, PV is NRT, right? And then using the ideal gas law, we uh, calculated the absolute temperature of uh, Kelvin, which is nine, negative 292, and we're pretty close. I can calculate the percent error now, right? Even this is negative, just take their absolute value. 
So my result was 292.71 minus 273.15, then divide that by 273.15. So I'm taking my result, I'm subtracting the actual result from it, and then dividing it by the actual, and then I'm getting the percent error. That's not actually bad. So you 7.16%, 7.16% off from the true absolute zero in the Celsius scales, right? So actually it's a pretty good little demo, pretty good illustration of the ideal gas law, and the calculation of what the absolute zero is in terms of Celsius, okay? Thank you very much.